Hello curious people. In this video, we will be exploring Gabriel's horn. Imagine a horn-like object, like the one you see on your screens. That you can fill up with paint, but you can never paint its surface. You can't even paint its inner surface, even though you can fill it up with only about 3 units of paint. But I will come back to the exact volume of paint later. This is the painter's paradox. There is a mathematical construction that fulfills these demands called Gabriel's horn. More specifically, there is a two-dimensional mathematical shape that has finite volume but infinite surface area. In this video, we are going to do the math for this and figure out what is happening with this horn. But first, some context and history. In 1643, student of Galileo and creator of the barometer, Evangelista Torricelli, wrote about this construction even though similar shapes had been found 300 years earlier by Nicola Resme. The name refers to the Christian tradition that upon Judgment Day, the Archangel Gabriel shall blow his horn. Defining said horn. We define Gabriel's horn to be the shape you get when you revolve the graph of the function 1 over x restricted to x greater than or equal to 1 around the x-axis by 360 degrees where the graph is shown on your screens. When doing the revolution for the graph restricted to x greater than or equal to 1, you get a horn like the one shown before. Before doing the calculations, we need to prepare the formulas for calculating the volume and surface area of the revolution. First, we calculate the volume. We do this calculation in the standard calculus way. Let's consider an arbitrarily thin vertical slice of the horn at any point. We want to add infinitely many, infinitely thin slices with radius f of x and height dx. The cylinder created by these slices has a volume of pi times r squared times h, where r is the radius of the circle and h is the height. And therefore, the formula for the volume of such a cylinder is pi times f of x squared dx. Summing all of these cylinders up can be done with an integral. And the general formula for the revolution is pi times the integral of f of x from a to b with respect to x. And by plugging in the values necessary, we get pi times the integral of 1 over x squared from 1 to infinity. I don't have the tools necessary to animate the process in obtaining the surface area, but I will leave a small paragraph in the description for you to read. The general formula of the surface area is 2 pi times the integral of f of x times the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared from a to b with respect to x. And by plugging in the values necessary, we get 2 pi times the integral of 1 over x times the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared from 1 to infinity. Time to figure out what the volume of revolution is. We start off with the integral and we work it out. Step 1. Setting the upper bound as a limit. Step 2. Squaring f of x. Step 3. Using the power rule, which is adding 1 to the exponent and dividing by the new exponent. Step 4. Applying the bounds of integration to our answer and voila. Wonderful! We found that Gable's horn can contain pi units of paint. Time to work out for the surface area. This is an improper integral, meaning I can use the comparison test if all I care for is convergence or divergence. So this is what we're gonna do. You see that big thing under the square root? All of that is actually positive. We don't know exactly what the positive number is, but we know it's always bigger than one. Due to the derivative part, being squared and added to 1, meaning this is for sure something bigger than 1. So this improper integral is greater than the improper integral of 2 pi 1 over x. Instead of having infinity as a bound of integration, we're going to replace it with t and put a limit as t goes to infinity. Then we can integrate 1 over x to get ln x and plug in our boundaries. Plugging in 1 will get a 0, so we're left with 2 pi ln t. And because of the shape of logarithms as t diverges, the logarithm does as well. So this is just equal to infinity. 
And just like that, we found the infinite surface of Gabriel's horn and its finite volume. Thank you for watching, having a nice day, and go study.